Shalom, shalom, you guys. <laughs> Tabernacles once again. Let me get let me get uh, squared away here. Welcome back to the channel. Things are going to be a little different this year than in in previous years, you guys. Um, in previous years, I've spent a lot of time uh, teaching on the feast and uh, sharing, you know, our Sukkot with you. It's going to be different this year. Um, a lot going on. I'm going to be spending time with my community here and um, not publishing any of that and um well some of you can understand why um i have to start protecting myself i have cyber stalkers so anyway i'm going to um share with you today a video very short video from one of the best youtube channels out there um, that are hebrew and that's uh, one for israel a very short video on what tabernacles is and why we celebrate it. And so I think you will be uh, edified and blessed by uh, this little video. And I want to encourage you guys. Um, we are now going into Tabernacles. And um, I think tomorrow for, for some and in a couple of days. The days are a little bit different depending on what group you're in. But if you're going by the lunar solar, you know that we are now in Tabernacles. And uh, this is one of my favorite feasts. It's all about family. 
and uh, camping and cooking out and fellowship and um, it's actually what we're going to do with Yeshua in the kingdom. So it's a very exciting time and it's a practice. Uh, with like all of these feasts, uh, it, it's teaching us something every time we keep it, um, even if you if you don't keep it perfect. Okay? You know, I have some people stressing out and uh, stressing on some some facts. We're, we're, you know, we're not sacrificing animals. Don't worry about that kind of stuff. I know what it says in the Torah, but we are in diaspora and are coming home. OK, so um you're not necessarily going to get it right every time. And we don't just have animals at our disposal that we can be sacrificing. So improvise, okay? Um, it, it's, I don't believe it's necessary right now. Um, it may be in the kingdom, uh, but but right now, I don't think it's necessary for um, the nations, the ones in diaspora Israel, to be sacrificing animals. Um, just Just not my thing. So... Uh, let me play this video for you, and um, please go and subscribe to uh, One for Israel, and I believe you will be blessed. Messiah, all the dwelling of God is among men, and he shall tabernacle among them. They shall be his people, and God himself shall be among them and be their God. I want to welcome you to another special episode of Pod for Israel in the holidays, and we're going to jump into Sukkot, okay? Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles. And we've been kind of going through this interesting, I mean, again, for me, it's a new perspective. It's something I haven't seen this uh, this way in the way yeah, we past. Started, we started, started with, with trumpets, mm -hmm. and could it be that Yeshua's physical return of our Messiah when he comes With the clouds of heaven and right? stays, yeah, and sticks around. <laughs> we know there's going to be trumpets anyway. Yeah, that we know for sure. It says oh in Revelation. There's lots of different trumpets, but yeah. this is the that that final trumpet where he comes physically. It's also a day that no one knows. Even mm -hmm. the rabbis don't know. The rabbis are having a hard time even in the holiday. It's obscured. There's all these sort of layers. It's beautiful. Then we went into Yom Kippur, the Day of being, Atonement. Yeah, the Day of Atonement, which is also kind of judgment day sentencing day you could say the verdict the verdict is read and for anyone who is proclaimed not guilty this is the best day you've ever had for those who are proclaimed guilty the worst day you've ever had but for us in faith it's it's not a somber day it's a day of rejoicing because we trust in the in the work and finished work of the high priest exactly in the yeshua. finished work of yeshua so now though we're to sukkot yeah, four okay. days after, four days after Yom Kippur. Again, we're looking to these events. Do they happen on the exact time? Maybe, maybe not, but it is happening in the order. I think if we look at any eschatological view, uh, we'll see that these things, as they're spoken of in Revelation and through the prophets, they're actually happening in the order that these festivals are coming. So now we're in Sukkot, or the Feast of Tabernacles. What insights does Tabernacles give us into the Torah for the future to come. Yeah, and by the way, the the, the even the, the word itself, Sukkot, Sukkot. The, the, wh why do we? Why do? Why? Do, why was Israel commanded to celebrate this holiday, in remembrance of the the, the redemption from Egypt? Yeah, a redemption, and sitting in the desert, sitting under right. the sukkah, under the tabernacle. Yeah, it says in the, in in Exodus the twelfth chapter, it says that after they left Egypt, they they went to a place. Even the place was called Sukkot, a Sukkot. Tabernacle, and yeah. It's, so they were in the under a tabernacle in a place called they called the place tabernacle. Right, because God God knew that even when they would would take possession of the land eventually, that that He would want them to remember this in the past. So all these festivals, they have a remembrance element of remembering the salvation that God you know did for our forefathers, but also forecasting yeah. forecasting looking for forward the for the future so it's it's both past present and future we're remembering and we're looking forward to so on the feast of tabernacles or sukkot god instructed his people to build temporary shelters or mm -hmm. sukkot as they're called in hebrew it reminds us of the temporary nature of life and it points to the world to come we look back to the tents that our fathers dwelt in the wilderness, like you said, but it's also interesting to think of the time after the Great Tribulation. So think about it. Go on these plagues, the wars, 
Mm -hmm. Just think of it. I mean, read through uh, some of the prophets of Isaiah and so forth. Um, and also in Revelation, we see it's uh, it's pretty bad. Pretty, messy. pretty bad. Whoever's pretty messy. left over then. Oh man, it's a tough. It's a tough deal. I don't think that the the Ritz Carlton is going to stand. We want <laughs> the King David Hotel will not be a five star any longer. Okay. Um, but but basically, just think of it. I was, I was just like kind of pondering this and like, hey, just in the context of as we read this, like the land's pretty decimated as God leads all these captives back home. Again, Isaiah speaks about how as the Messiah returns, he's leading he's leading the children of Israel back from the far reaches of the Middle East. Mm -hmm. it, all these things happen, the wars and threats and plagues, they took off everywhere, you know? And so, so... <laughs> You know, there's another Aliyah yet to come, and uh, it's it's horrible the events that lead to necessitating such Aliyah, but they're coming back from all over the place. He's leading them back to the land. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, these temporary dwellings is what they come back to after this exile. Yes, it's kind by, of interesting to look at that. In by the way, you know, in the, it says in the desert they were they were commanding this this holiday Sukkot Tabernacle. Mm. God tabernacled with His people. Yeah. in the desert yeah so so God made a tabernacle for himself mm -hmm. in the in the Ohel Moed in the in, in in the tent of meeting you know so, so God was turban even then even yeah. before we read in John that God took a, a form of flesh even before that we know that God tabernacled himself hmm. with the people of Israel and had a journey with them for 40 years until until he brought them the promised land and you know like uh as we've discussed on a bunch of different podcasts in times past there's there's some rabbinic tradition that's like wow it's really beautiful some of it you gotta you have to use discernment as we kind of dig through some of this stuff yeah but some of the interesting things to me is like even looking at the sukkah you have uh a kosher sukkah according to the rabbis mm -hmm. has only one entrance yes there's only one door there's only one way into the to the wedding festival you can't come any other way. And so, I mean, I kind of look at what did Yeshua say? I'm the door. I'm the There's way. There's only one way. There's only one way. You can't get into the wedding festival, but through. And when you yeah. lift up your skies, you have, you have to, you lift up your eyes, you have to see the stars. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to lift up your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> if you shingle your roof in, it's not a kosher sukkah. You got to have, you got to have some holes, which, uh, you know, here in Israel, we don't have rain so much during that time. Mm -hmm. uh, but in other parts, it might be a little <laughs> harrowing. But um, yeah, so they were to to uh, build these temporary dwellings, but the Sukkot celebrations foreshadows what we call the wedding festival of the Lamb, the great celebration of victory in the Messianic age. So I mean, again, mm -hmm. if you put it in the timeline of okay, this happens, this happens, and this happens, we see kind of this after the judgment. There's a joyous feasting in the Sukkah. We also remember in uh, Nehemiah. It describes Ezra exactly. read the Torah. There was national repentance. And, you know, after Yom Kippur, they were reading more. And they were like, and this shows you how much they were like, you could, you could say babes in the word of God. Let me just say here, you guys, at this point, this is in the time of Nehemiah. This is during the time of restoration. You see, when they went to Babylon, they lost all of this. And if you recall in the story of Ezra and Nehemiah, they found the Torah sealed up in the wall and they brought it to the king remember and so they began to remember the things that were lost and so they went back to it and this includes everything that they, they that was lost okay so all this um indoctrination in babylon um when they come back to the land nehemiah and ezra made sure babylon stayed in babylon okay they went back to the way who have made it okay that is really important to understand and the calendar was not altered in babylon we know from historical account this happened in 322 a.d 300 years after yeshua so they were still on the correct calendar uh when they came back home it wasn't it wasn't altered until later because they were like discovering this fresh and new here, you know, Ezra's reading through, and then they get to the point of, of in the Torah where it describes Sukkot, the tabernacles. And they're like, hey, 
let's go build some sukas let's go build some tabernacles and they run off into the woodlands and cut down branches and 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 they said it was the greatest exactly. most joyous feast of celebration and ever again had. again you said that word and it's interesting that you used it joy because yeah. it's the only holiday in the torah and we and, and we see it in in De yeah. deuteronomy the 16th chapter when it says you shall be happy and joyful in this holiday it says it mm -hmm. twice twice for the for the holiday of sukkot of tabernacle the only right. holiday when it's there's a command to be happy be happy to be joyful exactly <laughs> it's, it's my commandment okay but but you know further into this whole wedding festival of the lamb we see even even the rabbis speak about this as the sages say with the cloud of a chupa and with the shadow of a sukkah Israel will commune with their God. Yeah, and that was so chupa again, has a connotation for a wedding, right? Okay, let me describe a chupa. Yeah. So, when, a traditional Jewish wedding, you have what's called a chupa, and it's a temporary, like a sukkah, it's a temporary little shelter. Yes. Usually with kind of the ability to see through it, and like it's got nickel. four posts, and, and you kind of overshadow the bride and groom. Mm -hmm. So, that's a traditional Jewish wedding, has this uh, chupa, okay? And it's the bridal covering, okay? And it's supposed to symbolize God's covering of this marriage. But also, the sages, they're also saying that this sukkah is a chupa for us. Exactly. It's God's chupa to us. It's, it's his wedding covering for us. How beautiful is that? Yes, and marriage is a covenant, right? Marriage exactly. is a covenant in, in, in Jewish thinking. Yeah, yeah. The, again, you know, I hope you guys have gotten this, that this is not just some cold contract with a God of, uh, you know, religion and religious duties and rights. No, no, this is a wedding. This is a relationship. Feast, yeah. This is something God's looking for a relationship with mankind. Yeah. And so he speaks of this ultimate wedding and end time in Matthew 22 and also Revelation chapter 21, pulling back the curtain on the best and most joyous wedding feast humanity will ever know. He says, behold, the dwelling of God is among men and he shall tabernacle Amen among them they shall be his people and god himself shall be among them and be their god and and, and john as we as, as we mentioned earlier john in the first chapter of his gospel in verse 14 it says that when the word was the word was flesh and tabernacle john uses the yeah. same word tabernacle among us yeah. as he uses in revelation god tabernacle among us through yeshua yeah, yeah so i mean Unlike the Feast of Unleavened Bread or the Feast of Passover, which we know is seven days long, this holiday lasts for eight days, mm -hmm. which symbolize going beyond completion into eternity. Overflowing, right? Yeah. Resurrection and a new beginning. So again, you know, as we see these numbers have certain biblical themes and, and foreshadowings, uh, the eight days uh, symbolizes eternity. So this, this wedding is not just a temporary gig, you know? And by the way, we, we, in the rabbinic tradition, they start reading the Torah all over again in the, the last day of Sukkot. Right. So it's called Simchat Torah, the joy rewind of the, the Torah, the, the joy of the Word of God, yeah. the Word of the God tabernacle, right? And again, it's a beautiful thing. You'll see all through Israel and parks and stuff, you'll see the rabbis dancing with the scrolls and they'll be jumping up and down and having a great big party. It's a beautiful time. So just to recap, we started with, the, with Yom Tu'ah, Right. The, the beginning of repentance, when Yeshua, we said Yeshua could be re returning then. Then mm -hmm. Yom Kippur, you said the verdict after 10 days. Mm -hmm. And then four days later, there's the feast, the joyful, yeah. the joyful wedding. Yeah, right? So yep. we're, we're, and we're talking about that holiday, tabernacle, four days after Yom Kippur. All these festivals continue to be celebrated in the messianic kingdom to come exactly. in fact this isn't just a one-time gig that you know we just do this thing and then that's over let's uh, read yeah, zechariah 14 exactly in zechariah speaks of that in the age of messiah all nations will come up each year to jerusalem to present offerings to god so clearly you know i know that there's certain uh groups of of christians from all over the world that will come and celebrate the feast of tabernacles but this is not fulfilled yet of course <laughs> it, that's all great it's a foreshadowing of things yet to come we're speaking that all all nations will come up each year to jerusalem to present offerings to god and there's a blessing and a curse those who do not 
that they don't if they don't send ambassadors if they don't send a delegation what does it say in Zechariah there'll be no rain yes. in their land so there's kind of a judgment for for those who would you know in the in that uh, messianic kingdom the the thousand year reign there's a judgment for those who don't obey that of course well what if I'm not even a part of that what if I'm you know uh, just taken away to heaven or something like that it doesn't I you know I see all this as relevant because God is teaching us through it so whether we're there for that or not it doesn't matter what it is is seeing the beauty of God I guess also seeing how these prophecies and these scriptures are intertwined together and to tell yeah, us the same story and it's the appointed times of the Lord right yeah the appointed feasts of the Lord so it of course it must be important for every believer so the glory of this kingdom is being celebrated in Sukkot as well as the reconciliation of the nations as ancient enemies become grafted into the family Amen. Isaiah 19 speaks of the day of the Lord that there will be a highway from Egypt to Assyria Assyrians will go to Egypt and the Egyptians to Assyria and that they'll worship together in that day Israel will be the third along with Egypt and Assyria a blessing on the earth mm. The Lord Almighty will bless them, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people, Assyria, my hand, you work, and Israel, my inheritance. Amen. What a beautiful scripture. I mean, especially, I mean, right now, you know, if you go to S Syria, you're not going to be accepted. <laughs> it's it's going to be a dangerous place ticket. for you. One way ticket. <laughs> uh, Egypt is also dangerous for us as well. It's not necessarily the best friends down there. Um, but, but God's speaking of a day that, that the nations are coming together. You know, it's also kind of traditional, at least in, inside of our family. We we try to cook dishes from Ethiopia, from you know, we bring Chinese food. We do, you know, all sorts of inside of those all over days, the world. We try to get all these different dishes from all over the world and celebrate like the nations bringing their food. And of course, hey, what, what's a good holiday without food? <laughs> it, it's beautiful because for us as a family, like we remember that all the nations will come. Man. And and bring their best to the king, and becoming one new man. Yeah, the tabernacle way, of David being set up. You can see hints for that even even today when Muslims are are, are, are coming exactly. coming to faith in Yeshua. We see we see the love for the Jewish people from all over the world. We see it in a small in a small. Uh, it's it's like again a foreshadowing of what will happen in in big time. Right. So again, you know, whether, whether this is happening in this timeline or in our lifetime, it doesn't matter what view you hold on the timing. We all agree that our last moment here on earth is the beginning of our eternity. We look to these events with expectation, you know, as, as even our forefathers in the past, our, our, the apostles said, you know, even so, Lord, come quickly, you know, like, let's join in with John in that in that call to Lord yeah, Maranatha. And, 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 and again, just, just remind our listeners all over the world, wh wh why, do, wh why should they even care? We, we talked about the Day of Trumpet. We, we talked about uh, Yom Kippur 10 days after the verdict. Yeah. We, we talked, and, 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 and then we're talking about Sukkot. Why, why, should, why should somebody even care for, oh, okay, that's Jewish festivals, aren't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, Jewish, yeah. Jewish mm -hmm. traditions, well, what do I care? Well, why, sh why should we care? Because it's the story of salvation. And we can see inside of this the story of God's final redemption. You know, we see that through Passover, but we also see that, you know, in, in other words, in the spring holidays, but we also see it in the fall holidays. God is trying to tell us through every way. Just think of, of the efforts that he's gone through to share with us this great good news, this gospel. Think of the efforts throughout history. Like, think of even how... He penned through historical fact the story of ancient Israel mm -hmm. for you to hear it today. Think of how privileged we are to be in this time to hear these words. Of fulfillment, right? And to see even the state of Israel being fulfilled today. So really, again, guys, as we've said in the last episodes, if you haven't stepped into that relationship with him, don't delay. Take action now. If you haven't taken that faith journey with us, let's join. Let, let's join in. Join in with B'nai Israel. We're, we're grafted in. And he's inviting us to the wedding feast. So, so let's come. So, so our joy would be perfect in, in tabernacle, right? So, so we can really celebrate and be joyful on that holiday together. 
Hey, and for us who've taken that faith journey, we can join uh, with the heart cry of the early apostles. Maranatha, come Lord Yeshua. Your Amen. kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Amen. Shalom, you guys. What a what a great uh, presentation there. If you haven't already, go to One for Israel Ministry and subscribe. Solid teachings and um, from one, like I said, one of the best um, YouTube channels of, of the Hebrews out there. Um, you're not going to get scammed. You're not going to get fleeced. Um, these are these are good people. So go over and subscribe. Um, you know, the two sticks of Ephraim and Judah come together at some point. Uh, so we, we're not supposed to be alienating our brothers. All right. So. Uh, you know, and this is I can even see it happen in my life where where you guys brought me into a community that is, you know, there's a, a lot of Jews. Um, and I can see the two sticks coming together. And so it's a beautiful thing. You guys enjoy your your uh, your your festival. Um, it, this concludes with Tabernacles, which is um, we're in the in the harvest season where everything is coming to a close. And going into the planting season during the fall for the next year. So um, they're actually wrapping up some of the harvest um, in different places of the world now with mostly wheat and corn and things like that. And uh, this is a part of that celebration um, in, in that region. Um, when all these things come to a close is when, um, you know, we tabernacle. So um, have a good time. Don't beat yourself up if you have if you're not doing it. Just like the Bible says, I mean, some people are making a sukkah in their living room um, because it's you know it's not advantageous for them to do it outside. So um, don't beat your don't beat yourself up because you couldn't do it verbatim. He will sees your heart and he sees um, he sees you you participating. Um, even if you don't get to go to Jerusalem, that's the other thing. One of the requirements for males in uh, in uh, the Hebrew community is uh, we're supposed to be going to Israel to celebrate this or a delegation is. Um, and we will be doing that in the kingdom. I haven't been to Israel and done this, you guys, um, but I do keep it. I do keep it where I am. And it's because, um, you know, he hasn't led me to Israel right now. And to fulfill that, I believe that comes in the kingdom. I believe we're supposed to tabernacle where we are and learn where we are um, and, and go from there. He's going to send he's going to send angels to gather us for that great day. So there's no worry. OK. All right, you guys. Um, I just wanted to share that with you. I want to thank you for the, those of you who are praying for me and my situation that's going on now. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you for your messages. Um also, if you haven't seen the, the last video that I did, go and watch that. And, and if you are able to, uh, please send me those emails and those screenshots um, that will be needed. So until we see again, shalom to you. May he bless you. May his face shine upon you. Um, we'll see you again.